the northern part of the U.S. this year, it's been really wet, so no one's concerned about drought tolerance. But you know what? In the southern U.S., actually in a good portion of the United States, it's too dry. It has been too dry for the last few months, so every farmer there is wondering, how do I make my corn more drought tolerant? Well, don't get caught in this thinking that, well, they're going to have a trait for that in a few years. I'll be in good shape. You know, I just got to wait for that trait. That's crazy talk. I mean, there is, there are definitely many things you can do on your farm to make your crop more drought tolerant. So you need to start addressing them immediately. Okay, so one of the first things, and I know this may seem counterintuitive, but one of the first things is put drain tile in on your farm. Almost every spring, everybody is too wet initially. The snow melts, you get some spring rains, whatever it is, you're almost always too wet because a tiny little plant doesn't need a lot of moisture and it definitely can't stand a high water table. With tile, all we're doing is lowering the water table down. We're not taking all the moisture out of the soil, just lowering the water table. When you lower the water table, that allows plant roots to grow as deep as possible as early in the season as possible. Uh, we did a little study in our own office and we had a plant with a plexiglass uh, side to, uh, to the pot. And in just a week's time, that corn plant had a root over a foot deep. It was unbelievable to me and I thought, Wow, I, I guess I really do need to have that water table low super early in the season because even if I'm planting in April or like down south, if I'm planting in March, you say, oh, not much is going to happen with that corn plant. It's not going to get big for a long time, but the roots are going to be even bigger than what you're going to see above ground. So you want to have that water table low. If you do that, then you have lots of roots later in the summer down deep in the ground to extract moisture when your soil is dry. Well, that could help you, Brad, but I'm going to trump that whole statement because none of that makes any difference at all if you don't take care of compaction issues. We saw it on our own farm. I remember the first time we ever dug a root pit, Brian. It was a year where our corn was starting, the leaves are starting to roll up. It was that dry. And when we dug that root pit, we found out we had this serious compaction layer at about eight, eight to 12 inches, and there was lots of water down in the soil deeper. Okay, so what are you gonna do to reduce that to compaction? It. Well, you've gotta do some tillage is what you have to do. You start with something like a, a, deep, uh, a deep rip. Now that could be uh, completely turning everything over, or it could just be running some straight, uh, straight shank tillage like we do on our farm well, with, our, yeah, with our zone oh, commander. I'm going to stop and you just, right there. The, the, the deep ripping, all you're going to do is you're going to move your compaction layer down from say 8 inches down to 14 inches Well, it's inches kind of a short-term fix. It's a short-term fix. I mean, yeah. for this year it's going to help and yes, it's not a long-term thing because eventually you're just moving your problem down, moving your problem down. But when you're running a straight shank through it, uh, like we'll do it about 20 inches, so we'll rip through uh, two layers of compaction like that we've got in our... We're going to slice through it. We're not going to tear everything up. All we're doing is putting some slices there and we've seen roots go way down deep in the ground once we've done that for several years afterwards. Well, the point is the roots will go to the point of least resistance. So when they find those slices that we've made through the compaction layer, the roots will just fill them up and they will get down deep and they'll get moisture later on in the season, which is very important. I mean, with corn roots, you're going to see them down four feet, five feet, even more if there are nutrients down there to go after and okay, there's water. Okay, you just brought up what I think is the most important beyond tile, beyond compaction. It's having the proper balance of nutrients in the soil. Did you know that if you have the right balance of nutrients, your crop is way more drought tolerant? But here's the reason why. If your crop is short on anything, let's say it's short on phosphorus, okay? What it does is it actually brings more water into the plant because it's short on that nutrient. And even though it didn't need water at the time, it's bringing it in because that's how almost all nutrients get into the plant is with water. So basically, you've made your plant inefficient with water use when you're short on certain nutrients. So have ample fertility and have the right balance of fertility and you're going to have a much more drought tolerant crop. Well, let's take another obvious one, Brian, and that's weed control. When you look at whether it's grass weeds or broadleaf weeds, when they're out competing with your crop for not only sunlight energy and nutrients, but also moisture, Wow, how can, if you're short on moisture some year, how can you feed the weeds and the plant? You need to use pre-emerge herbicides in any crop you're raising. I don't care if it's corn, soybeans, wheat, anything you're raising, have a good pre out there because any weeds that come up at any height, at any thickness out in the, in the crop, 
it doesn't matter. It's going to pull moisture away from your crop. And in a drought year, you absolutely can't stand that. So have great weed control. The other thing that a lot of farmers will focus on is row spacing. And you say, well, man, if I'm in the northern U.S., am I going to benefit from going to a twin row or a 20-inch row versus a 30-inch row? You know what? On a super dry year, there is a little bit of benefit in getting that row shaded in and closed yep. off more quickly. Year in and year out over 10 years on our farm, I don't know if it's this huge difference, uh, but it's definitely something to take a look at if you've solved all those other problems. Don't think that, well, I'm just gonna go buy some new iron, that'll fix everything. It won't. You've gotta do the other steps that we talked about here today if you wanna drought proof as much as you can your corn. And the last thing that I've got is insect and disease control, especially very early in the season. So whether it's rootworms or whether it's the, the certain diseases you might get in corn early on, you wanna have a good fungicide on whatever corn you're buying. You wanna have a good insecticide or have some BT traits or something because if you don't have insects feeding on your crop, you don't have diseases into your crop, your crop's just gonna be much more drought tolerant. Well, that was a lot of steps there, Brian, but you know what, there's, <laughs> there's simple fixes for your farm, just little things that'll improve your production this year and also improve your drought tolerance, whether it's improving the drainage on your farm, improving the weed, insect, disease control, maybe considering changing up your row spacing a little and bit. And don't ever forget about having the right balance of nutrients and having ample fertility out in your soil. That, I think, may be the most important thing yet. And don't forget compaction too, Brian, but you know, you have to do all those things right, and weed control is so critical if you have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 